It's a good night. I appreciate the opportunity to be out here tonight. I uh, just appreciate the opportunity to stand. It means uh, more to me than you know. <laughs> but the Lord's kind of laid on our hearts tonight. Uh, it's chapter 37 of the book of Psalms. Uh, this is my go-to. This is... Yeah. This is the chapter in the Bible. These are the verses that I go to when my life's in turmoil, when my life's got things going on in my life, when I'm worried, when I'm stressed out, when something bad's happened. This is where I go. Yeah. This is probably my favorite scripture in the Bible. So you bear with me here tonight. I, it's, I said I get to read it and I, got to, I start to think on what God's done for me and where yeah. he's brought me from and all the times, that, times when I've really called Bless out and name. I really needed him. He's always been there, and I'm thankful for that. So you pray for us here tonight. Uh, in verse 37, and, or I'm sorry, chapter 37, verse 1, it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down. Like the grass and weather as the green herb, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto him, or commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Uh, for a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, though they shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. For he see that his day hath come, and you may be seated. You know, and again, as I was saying here a minute ago, this is just my favorite Bible or favorite chapter in the Bible because it means so much to me. This there was a time in my life where there were struggles going on. I was having to fight things, even after my Christian life. In my Christian life, I hadn't been a Christian very long, but there was battles going on in my life. There were things that I was having to do. And every time I would get ready to face that battle head on, I would read this scripture. I would read this, and it spoke peace to my soul. It Amen. gave me that comfort. So when I thought, what better thing, or well, the Lord laid it on my heart here tonight. What better right. thing that I can show to you tonight is what Amen. peace God can offer you. Amen. In the world that looks out there, that looks at us, and tells us that we're crazy. Yeah. Tells us that there's things going on that we ought not to even assemble ourselves here together That's tonight. Right. Because there's so much sickness going That's on. There's right. so much craziness going on. There's a world out there that tells us that we shouldn't even be here tonight. But God tells me different. Yeah. God tells me that he's faithful and he's just and he'll take care of his people. He'll make a way for us to be okay. He he longs for us to come together. I believe that, Tommy. I, I believe he longs for us to come together in his house and worship together that we may see our brother and sister raise their hand. We may hear somebody shout. We may see somebody hit the altar. We may hear somebody testify and all those things are good. Those are good for the body of believers because we need those things. Sometimes we need encouragement one for another. Sometimes we need to be that help that's one for another. Sometimes we just need to see somebody going through something and see how they handle those things. Now, I, I know that's not the way that we want to look at things a lot of times. We don't want to go through things in this walk of life. Our flesh don't want to struggle. Our flesh don't, our flesh right. don't want to have heartaches, that's have true. troubles. Right. But we never know. Somebody may be watching us on the other side. Somebody may be seeing yeah, those yeah. things that we're going through and saying, hey, did you see how they're handling this situation that they're going through? They've got everything. They lost a loved one. They've got all these other things going on in their life, but yet they remain faithful to God. They're there when the doors are open, not just because they have to be. They're there because they yeah, want to yeah. be. They're there on Sunday morning. They're on Jesus. Sunday night. They're there on Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. They're even there on a work day when they have something going on at the church. People, yeah. they yeah. just say that we are consent that we want to be where God would have us to be. Right. People need to see that God can take care of his people. You know, you go back and you look all through the Bible. There's many different stories of where God's people were afflicted. You look back at the children of Israel. They were in bondage. Pharaoh had them in bondage for years. 
But God had a man. God had a man. He was going to send down there and say, hey, you're going to get my people out. You're going to do what I ask you to do. Even Moses told him, Lord, Lord, you know I can't speak. You know I can't do those things. He said, well, fine, that's fine. I'll send your brother Aaron with you. So God made a way there. He made a way for Moses to go and talk to Pharaoh and give him every opportunity to let God's people go. He gave him ten different chances, as we can read about. Ten different chances and ten different things happened to him because he still wouldn't humble himself down and let God's people go. Even after he had done let him go, God's people, even his own people that he had done freed from the bondage were still murmuring and said, Lord, we had food back there to eat. We had water back there to drink. What are we doing out here in the wilderness? What are we doing wandering around? We've come to a sea. We ain't got no pass. We ain't got no way to get through there. What are we going to do? We'd have been better off. And that's the way we are as Christian people a lot of times. We see a struggle come up in our life. We see things come to us, come in our path, and we say, Lord, I'd have been better off if I'd have just not stayed at the church house. If I'd have been better off if I'd have not stayed, if I'd have not went to church. I'd have been better off if I'd have not testified because Satan wouldn't have fought me on this thing so hard maybe. But ain't you good to know, ain't you glad to know that when you come to your wits end, when you don't know what else you're going to do, when you have to finally break down and rely on God that he's going to part that sea wide open for you. And you're going to cross on dry ground. There ain't no enemy behind you going to catch you. They may be sh- shouting at you, yelling at you. But, but that's all right, because you're ahead of them. Amen. Because God's got you and leading Amen. you on the way that you need to go. If God, they, God will not let them catch you from behind. No. God will make sure that if you do your part and keep going, pressing forward like God would have us to do, they ain't ever going to catch us. All that they have, all they can do is yell and scream and snap and fight at us. And tell us what we need to do. Tell us that there's a day that we're, they're going to catch us. Hey, we're going to get you. Sin's going to catch up to you. Sin's going to catch, We're going to make you. We're going to put you right back here in bondage. How many times have I been there in my life? I've tried to do something for God. I've went and I've been doing God's work. And Satan come up and say, hey, I'm going to walk you back up. You remember who you used to be? You remember what you used to do? You, they ain't nobody wants to hear you stand up behind a pulpit. They ain't nobody want to hear you proclaim God's word. I can tell you this from experience. I fought this hard for yeah. about the last month. Sure. For about the last month, I wanted to lay it down and walk away yeah. more than anybody. I've not even told. I told my wife that's the only person that I've mentioned that to. I wanted to lay down and walk away because I felt in my heart, I felt like Satan had got in there and got in my head and told me, hey, they ain't nobody cares what you've got to say. They ain't nobody yeah. cares what you're doing. No. And I'm, I'm the one that let him in there. I let him get there. I let him take place in my life more than he should. <laughs> but then it came to a realization I had a, a, something happen to me, nothing bad, nothing physical. But I, come, I had a realization this past Saturday. There was something that God showed me and He opened my eyes yeah. to back to where it was when He called me to preach. When he told me, you're going to do this yeah. for me because I give you this. Right. You're going to do this for me because I told you to. It don't matter what anybody yeah. else says. Yeah. And when I made up my yeah. mind that Saturday... I went and was able to go to the radio Sunday morning and I felt my, a peace that I've not felt like I said in months. Praise the Lord. Not only that, Monday night, Brother Tommy messaged me, hey, can you come preach for me Wednesday? Yeah. Not only that, Praise I go to Lord. work Tuesday. I go to work Tuesday and Brother Bruce messaged me and said, hey, can you come and stand yeah. in the gap for me Sunday? And I said, Lord, I will do it because I believe what you're telling me. I have to keep going forward because there's too much in front of me. There's too much relying on me pushing forward. I can't turn back now because I know what's back there. I know the struggles. I know the heartaches. I know what's going to happen if I turn those things back. (laughs) So I've made up my mind this past week. That I'm going to do what God has me to do. I don't care if anybody likes it. I don't care who likes it, who wants to hear it, or what I'm going to Amen. do, what God's called me to do. Amen. Why? Because God called me to do it. Tommy That's didn't right. call me to do it. Zach didn't. I didn't. Nobody else. Nobody else can give me the peace that I have right now in my life. Nobody else can give me the the assurance that I, when I stand and proclaim God's word, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yes. But God. Amen. Amen. And we look back through the Bible at all these different times where God's people needed that reassurance. They needed help along the way, just like we do sometimes. I needed help. 
And that's why my wife told me, she said, you got to start talking to somebody. She said, you can't just keep all this bottled up inside of you. She said, I know you pray about it. I know you do those things. She said, but you need to find you somebody. And yeah, I'm guilty of that. I do keep it in a lot of times. But God had a way of revealing that Himself to me. Even in that time, even in when I was stubborn and stuffed myself up and didn't want to do what God wanted me to do. He revealed Himself and He said, Hey, you see what I'm capable of. It didn't, he didn't have to say a word. Nobody had to say a word. It was just a realization that I had in my mind just like that because of something that took place. Ain't, we, ain't you glad that you've got a God like that? Yeah. Ain't you glad that you've got a God Amen. that'll show you exactly where you need Amen. to go when you're struggling along, when you feel like there's no hope right. at all? Ain't right. you glad that there's a God there just waiting and begging for you to say, God, that's it, I'm done, here it is, you take it. When, I, when a lot of times I have to come to the realization I try to take it myself before I ever give it to God. Yeah. Yeah. And every single time, not two out of three times, but every single time. Right. I have to give it to God anyways. Because I can't overcome it myself. Amen. Even though my flesh wants to think that I can do these things. Even though that my flesh is too prideful a, minute, a lot of times to just say, Hey, I need help. I get to a point where I still have to. Yeah. I still have to say, God, I need you. Amen. I need you right now more than I've That's ever right. need you. And we need Him right now. The day that we live in, the time that we live in. You know, it says here, don't worry about those evildoers that are out there. Don't worry about the things that are going on. Because they're going to keep getting worse and worse. They're going to keep, the Bible tells us, if we read our Word and, and study like we're supposed to, it tells us, hey, this world's going to wax worse and worse. What we see now is ain't nothing to what's coming. But why should we worry? Yeah. Why should we worry when we got a God that apart the Red Sea? Amen. Why should we worry when we've got a God that, that, that was there was three Hebrew children threw in the fire? He didn't just leave them in there. He joined them in the fire. Amen. We may still have to go through the troubles. He, they, he didn't right. pull them out of the fire. They were still in that fire. They still had to be concerned, had to be willing to do for God. Yep. Yep. They got through in the fire. But after they got through in there, there was a fourth man in there with them. Yeah. It wasn't just them. God was in there with Amen. them. Amen. See, so whatever obstacle we go through, God's willing to be there with us as long as we take Him with us. Right. He don't want us to face this walk by ourselves. He don't want us to try to, to walk outside these doors by ourselves. We come to church house on, on Sunday night, on Sunday morning, on Wednesday nights. For me, I need a fill up. Yep. Because I, what I face out there sometimes drains me, if I'm going to be honest with you. That world out there takes Christ out of me. And I think if we're all honest, in a sense, it does it to all of us. That's why the assembly of God's people together is so important. So important to come together and worship one with another. You may have the word, you may have the testimony that somebody needed to hear that very week. You may have those words that somebody was considering walking out. Somebody was considering weighing it all down. You may have that very testimony, that very song, that very message that somebody can say, you know what, God? I hear you, and I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on because I want to do what you would have me to do. No matter what the world says, because they tell us we're crazy. They tell us that we that's can't. Right. They tell us that we're gonna, right. they're going to shut all this down. That's right. and, and that's fine. It don't matter. We may resort to preaching it off the radio. We may resort to doing it on a live video. That don't matter because God will get His Word out one way or another. He's, he's not, we're not, the, the world's not going to shut God up. Because like I said, God's always had a man. He's always had somebody willing to do His work. And I, can, and I know that from experience that how much better life is when you're willing to be that man, when you're willing to be that woman that God wants you to be, that God has something for you to do rather than be that Christian or that one that's sitting back on God and saying, no, I'm done. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want no part of that. I know how miserable that life is. 
But you don't have to wait. You don't have to say some big grand prayer to get things fixed back up with God either. If you belong to Him, you're just a second away from repentance. You're just a second away from reigniting yourself with God, reuniting that fire that used to burn so deeply within you. Again, you say, how do you know that? Been there. Been there. Right. Experience. Right. I know those things. I know that God loves us. I know that God wants to take care of us. And again, you look through the Bible and you see all these different times. You look at Daniel in the lion's den. They come to Daniel and said, you will not bow down to your God and pray. You look at that. That's where we're at a lot of today. You will not worship together. You will not have a congregation full of people come, right. in my, come into a house of church and worship. You will not do those things. And it's sad to say that a lot of us have went to those places and said, yeah, We'll conform to that. We agree with that. We understand that. But I'm thankful for that there's still some places that ain't scared to stand up like Daniel was and say, hey, I don't care what you say. I'm going to pray anyway. Three times a day with the window open. He didn't even try to hide it. That's what we need to do. We don't need to try to hide what we're doing in here. We need to open the doors, let the open the windows, let the world see what's going on inside this church house. Not just here, but church houses all across the world. Not just here in Blount County. I firmly believe that there is churches all across this world that is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. It ain't just here in this small little community. There is churches all over the world proclaiming who Jesus Christ is and what He done for them. And it's our job to get that word out because He's going. He wants it out. He don't want any of this world that's out here to die and go to hell. Hell was not created for any of people. It was created for Satan and for his angels. That's all that it was created for. But we have to be willing to step out and get the word out. We have to be willing to be like Daniel and say, Hey, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what God would have me to do. I don't care what you tell me I can't do when God tells me I can. God trumps what you say every time. Every time. That's right. And I was, I was reading, you think about Elisha. The king of Syria was after him. Yeah. Boy, he was after him. Had him in a cave. Him and his little servant boy had him with him. They woke up and the servant went outside and they were surrounded. There was people everywhere. Syrians everywhere. The king had sent people everywhere. All Elisha had to do is he prayed to God said, God, Will you open my servant's eyes so he can see what I see? And there was more of them than there was of those others. He prayed to God. They blinded, that God blinded those Syrians. And they walked right down the mountain not worried about one thing. See, that's what God can do for us. He can blind our enemies and he can make us a way out no matter who's around us. He can make us a way through where nobody at all, Tommy, can stop what God set forward. Nobody can stop what God put in motion. Nobody can stop what God wants done. Not because I'm preaching it, not because Tommy's preaching it or Zach, not because anybody's preaching it, but because the Word of God needs to go out. Because God's Word is going to go out. Because God has a message for the world out there. God wants people to see that, hey, no matter what's going on out there, I still have a few good people that's willing to serve me, that's willing to do my work, that's willing to keep my commandments, that's willing to live the old-fashioned way, that's willing to raise their families in a godly way, that's willing to, to show them that they must fear me. Yeah. Yeah. We're scared of everything else but God. You, you think about that for a minute. Look at the world that we live in. This world is scared of everything but God. The one that can take our life away. That's right. The one that decides where we spend eternity. We're not a bit scared of Him at all. We just take it it for granted every single day that that God's going to make a way. God's going to take care of us. When yet we're still out here, we're living in sin, we're living a hellish life. We're not doing what God would have us to do. But we don't truly fear God. Because if we did, if we did, we'd fall on our face and say, God, please forgive me. And I'm not telling you this because I want you to think anything good about myself. Because that's not what I'm getting across here. I had to do that very thing. That Saturday night. That God showed me those things. I had to bow my face. 
Yeah. When I got home, I had to hit the car, the floor, and I said, "God, I'm sorry. Yeah. I will do Amen. what you will have me to do." That's right. That's right. And you see what He's done in the sense after that. That may not mean much to many people, but it does to me. Amen. It means a lot to me that I'm standing behind this sacred desk tonight. It means a lot to me that if the Lord tarries is coming, I'll get to do it at the radio Sunday morning. Yes. If the Lord sees fit, I'll get to do it behind Brother Bruce's pulpit Sunday morning. Amen. That means something to me. Amen. That's a reassurance to That's me. Right. That's right. And God's good at that. God's good at reassuring his believers. God's good at reassuring his Christian people that, hey, I've got you. That's right. Like Brother Tommy was saying, it's dark sometimes. Yeah. You get to where you can't read the word or you don't feel like you're feeling God in the church service or you just don't want to do. Yeah. It gets dark sometimes. But ain't it good to know that it God is. is just right there. He's yeah, he never is. left you, Tommy. Yeah, did. All you had to do was call on his name yeah. and he was right there, right with you through the whole thing. Amen. Just like he is with you out there tonight. Just like he is with me. The world can't do nothing to us right. unless God allows it. Yeah. That's right. And if God allows it, so be it. Amen. If God sees fit to let the world take Amen. us out of here, right. So be it. We shouldn't be scared to death because we know where we're headed. We know what long what sets before us. We know that this world is not our home. That's right. We know that we're just passing through here. That there's a better land to hold. That there's more to gain. That there. And I, I I'm learning that. The older I get, and I, I just I'm learning that how much how much less. This place means to me. That's right. How much less right. what comes on the TV Amen. means to me. Amen. What comes on the radio, how That's much right. less that means to me. Yeah. But how much more it means to me when I can get in God's house Amen. and the Spirit of God starts moving and I feel that Holy Ghost and start Amen. to work in my heart and I yeah. feel them tears start to roll in and I can raise my hand every now and then. He might let me say an amen or a shout or something. There's nothing greater to that. Do that to me than that in my life. Because yeah. I know that that shows me you're where you need to be. Yeah. You're doing what I would have you to do. So we need to not be concerned about what's going on out here. Just keep plowing forward. That's right. Help us go. Keep doing Amen. what God would have us to do. It ain't all on Brother Tommy. Now you've got one of the best pastors in the world. I believe that with all my heart. But it ain't all up to him. There's a congregation behind him that he's going to need your help sometimes. He's going to need encouragement. He's human. He's flesh and blood just like we are. Just like you are. There's times where he's going to struggle. There's times where he may need that, that handshake, that pat on the back and say, Hey, brother, I love you. Keep going. There's times where we all may need those things. And if we'll do those things, think of what the church of God can do. Think of the power that the church of God has. Not just here. Not down the road. Not yeah. up in Knoxville. Not down in Nashville. Not wherever. Yeah. The church of God, if the church of God would come together to worship God, think of a movement that we could have. Think of a revival that would break play, that would break loose. Maybe it would start right here in this church. Maybe it start right here behind this pulpit. But then what do you do? Maybe it travels to Knoxville. Amen. Then maybe it travels to Nashville, then to Memphis, and then to Oklahoma or Texas. Or it, it could start right here. Yeah. Praise but we have to be willing for it to start right here. It has to start right here. Amen. Amen. I can't wait on Tommy. I can't wait on Zach. I can't wait on the singers. I can't wait on the deacons. I can't wait on the other church right. members to show up. A lot of times we get disheartened by those things. We get disheartened by the numbers that are in our church house. We get disheartened by the people that are not coming. Right. We ought not to get disheartened. Just keep going. Yeah, fret not God has a way. He'll get them back in line where they need to be whenever He sees fit. He'll deal with them. He'll take care of that. You don't worry about them. You just do what God tells you to do. Whether it's sing a song, whether it's preach a message, whether it's tell your testimony, whether it's just raise your hand, whether it's pray for somebody. You do what God would have you to do and watch God work. 
You do your part and get out of the way. Amen. That's all God wants from us. Is us to do what He tells us to do, then just get out of the way. Because if I had my way after God tells me to do something, and if I keep meddling in and keep going in and keep doing more and more, I'm going to mess it up. Yep, that's right. But God's got a way to get things fixed. God's got a way to make sure that His people will keep going. God's got a way to make sure that you don't worry about the world out here. And we do. We fear so many different things. We really do. You can turn on the news, any news channel you flip on, whether it's 8, 10, 12, 20, or whatever it is, and you can see the bad news all over the, all over the country, all over the community, just in our little community right here. You can see the fear. You can hear the fear. And I'm not just talking about just the virus. I'm not talking right. about that. Because and, and again, I'm not making little of that. I know that's a real thing. And I know we use common sense there. And God would do what we see fit that God would have us to do. But we're scared to walk outside. We're scared that we're going to get shot while we walk out in the grocery store. You know, we're scared for our kids' lives anymore, and rightly so sometimes. You send them to school, and you, ain't, you have to wonder what they're going to encounter. But if we'll trust God and not worry, that's, what he said. that's exactly what he said to do. That's right. Trust him. Trust him and do what he'd have you to do. Let all that other stuff pass by. And he'll take care of it. Yeah, there may be times where things come at you and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to handle the situation. Just drop where you're at. Stop what you're doing. That very instant say, God, here I am. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Where do you want me? What do you want me to do? If you'll be quiet long enough and listen... And be willing. Amen. I believe that God tells right. a lot of people a lot of things to do, but they ain't willing to do what He wants right. them to do. They ain't willing Amen. to give up what He wants them to give up. So He don't bless them the way that He should that they that they think He should. Because we have to make a decision. We have to be sure, we have to be sure that we're willing to follow Him and willing to die daily. Willing to let some of these things that, that we are so holding on to in our life. Sometimes we have to let them slip by the side. Whether it be a friend, whether it be a family member, if it's something that's separating you from God yeah. and putting a hindrance in between you and God, you need to move it Amen. or get it right. Amen. Because if we're separated from God, we're not happy. That's right. We're not with God. We're not in God's will. You know, and I, I never really thought about this till here a couple of months ago or so or a year or so ago. It don't take you two months to get backslid on God. No. It don't take you a week. It don't take you a day. All it takes you is just a split second and you don't repent. You may have a thought come in your mind that you that you start thinking about and you keep thinking on that thought. Before you know it, you've done separated yourself from God. But if you, sin, yes. Sin will separate you from God. But at that very instant that something pops in your mind, that something very instant that you see something that you shouldn't see or say something that you shouldn't say, most of the time before you even say anything, God will tell you, you don't need to say that. Yeah. But that very instant, pray. Don't wait. Yeah. Don't wait. Brother Robert Burns, I, he's used this many times. And at... at it makes so much sense to me. He's a neat freak, if any of you know him. He keeps his trucks clean, his house clean, keeps everything clean. But what he told me before, he said, you know, if you go to work every day and you stop at the gas station and you get a candy bar and a Coke every day, and after you eat it and after you eat your candy bar and drink your Coke, you throw it in the floorboard, you've got a mess there. By the time, every, by the time Friday gets up, you've got 10 pieces of trash Weighing in your floor that you've got to kick around to get in to get get in the truck. If you just pick that trash up the moment you have it and throw it away right then, every day, every single day, right. every time a piece of trash comes in your life, right. pick it up and throw it away. You ain't got to wait till Sunday to go to the dump and get rid of it all. Amen. You ain't got to wait to put it, to throw it all in the trash can. Yeah. If you get rid of it as soon as it comes. Amen. You'll live a lot better Christian life. You'll right. be a lot happier. Now, I'm, not, I'm still not going to tell you you're not going to face trials. 
You're not going to face troubles because you are. We're going to face those things. God tells us that we are. What is it? A man born of a woman is a few days in full trouble. We're going to face things down here. But if we trust God, verse 3 here says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. (laughs) This is important right here, verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. We can't just think he's going to. We can't just try to live a Christian life. We have to commit to God. We have to be committed to God Every day, Amen. every second of every day. We can't say, oh, there's a TV show coming on that's got a bunch of bad language and a bunch of filth coming on that I'm going to just turn God off for a little bit. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch this. Then I'll make, then I'll pick God back up then. It don't work that way. It don't work that Amen. way. Trust me, that's again, that's something I've tried. It don't work. We have to commit our whole way to God. Amen. Commit our heart to God. And if we'll do that, he'll take care of us. He'll bless us. He'll make sure that we don't go hungry. He'll make sure that we're fed. And not just fed in a physical manner, but he'll feed us spiritually. Amen. He'll let you feel some of that goodness. He'll open up those windows of heaven and he'll pour out those blessings upon you. And sometimes it just feels like it's just rolling all over you. You don't know what to do. But just raise your hands and say, thank you, God. Amen. There ain't nothing better than those feelings. I ask you tonight, church, trust in God. Amen. I know we face things. Again, I, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the poster child for yeah. for letting things get in my mind and getting burdened down and doubting God. I'm the poster child for that. I'll tell you that. I'm honest with you about that. Yeah. But God's showing me. More and more yes. every day. If I'll get in this Amen. and cut my flesh away yep. and quit doing what the flesh wants to yes. do and, and do what that inward man wants to do, Amen. pick this up, listen to God's man, preach a message. Maybe there's a message on YouTube or on Facebook or somewhere that God's put out there that I need to listen to. If I'll do that, then rather than listen to something else or some other ungodliness. That's right. That's right. He'll feed you. Amen. He'll make sure. He'll give you strength for the journey. He'll give you strength for that battle. You know, you think of all the, again, you think of David, him and Goliath. Think of the battle that he was going through. You, you know, and I don't believe, I believe that David wasn't scared one bit. I believe he's seen that giant and he knew exactly what he had to do because he knew he had a God with him that was going to take care of him. We are to be the same way. Yeah. That same God that David had is the same God that I have. Yeah. I can face those same giants, not just face those giants. I mean, I can slay those same giants yeah. that David slayed by God's help, yeah. by God's hand. If God, if I let God guide me and do what He had me to do, and not be worried, That's right. I start doubting That's right. what God's called. I start doubting what God says in His Word. I start doubting what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. Then it ain't very long that I'm starting to doubt what if I'm doing the right things as a father, if I'm doing the right things as a husband, if I'm doing the right things as a co-worker. It ain't very long before all those things start stacking up on top of each other. And it ain't very long you get burdened down with those things. But if we'll just trust God and not worry. Amen. God help me. We'll be all right. Yeah. We'll press through this. Yeah. I believe we're, there's a group of people right here in this building, right here tonight, that I can feel the spirit off of. Yeah. I've heard it in the songs. I've heard it in the testimonies. I've seen it in the way that you worship, the way that you back your pastor. I know there's a group of people right here that want that, yeah. that want that closeness with God, that want to be closer than we've ever been. Amen. And we can have that. That was my prayer at the new year. Was God, I want to be closer to you this year than I have ever been in my entire life. And boy, let me tell you, I'm off to a terrible start. I am, to be honest with you. 
Because I've let Satan get in there. And he knows that. He knows what it takes to get in our minds. But also, I know how to defeat him. Amen. I, there's nothing that I can do. But it's all in here. Yeah. That can defeat him. That'll send him running. That'll pack his, make him pack his bags and get gone quick. Because yeah. he don't want no part of that. He knows what kind of power God has. He's seen God. Yeah. He's seen the power firsthand right. of what God has and what, who God is. So he knows if we start calling on him and we're, we're sincere about it. Now, you can call on God and not be sincere about it. You can say those little vain prayers and them not get, not get nowhere. Again, I've done it. They ain't going to do you no good. But when you humble yourself down and you, maybe you're broken or maybe you've got things going on in your life, but when you really humble yourself down and say, God, here it is. I'm not picking it back up no more. I'm going to leave it at your feet and you show me exactly what you need to do. Yeah. You can face that obstacle. Yeah. It, may, it, still, it still may not be the easiest thing that you can do. But you can. Jesus. What is it? Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yeah. All things. Not just some things, Tommy. Trust all me. things. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Cast all your care upon Him, for He careth Amen. for you. Thank you, God. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. That's right. Not as the world giveth, right. I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Philippians 4, 19, But my God shall supply all your needs, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. See, so there's nothing that we can't overcome as God's people. That's right. There's nothing that the enemy can throw before us. They may, he may slow us down a little while. That's what he did to me there a couple yeah. of weeks ago. He slowed me down a little bit and made me thought that made me think that I just might as well just give up. Yeah. He's good at that. But I should have never let it get to that point, to be honest with you. Should have never let myself get to that point. <coughs> and I'm being honest with you. I, that's, that's, right. that's not something that I want to hide from you or to keep from you. Because maybe it's something you can use my, my experiences. Right. You can see my, my failures, my faults. That's and maybe you can look at it and say, hey, he messed up, but he got back up. Yeah. He did, his, he did right. things the right way. Amen. Maybe you can look at that and maybe you say, hey, I remember what Dustin said a couple of nights ago. Don't give up. Don't give Don't up. Because right. I guarantee you I'll walk out these doors and I'll have to fight Satan before the night's over. Right. One way or another, I'll have to fight him before the night's over. Whether it be a thought, whether it be something I see on the TV, whether some way, shape, or form, I'll end up having to fight him before the night's over. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have to fight him again. He, he don't wait on me to get up. Yeah. He's already standing there waiting at the foot of the bed when I get up and say, hey, here you are. I'm ready to get you. But if I'll get up in the morning and decide right then, that yeah. very instant, well, and not give him that opportunity to slide yeah. in before I even give him that opportunity, if I'll slide out of bed and I'll hit my knees and say, God, here I am today. Yeah. Use me. Amen. Like Isaiah said, here I am, God, use me. Whatever you want me to do today, God, I'm willing to do. Yeah. Satan will back off a little bit. <laughs> He'll still come back at you at some point today. <laughs> at least he does me. But if we'll do what God, if we'll put God first in our lives, if we'll commit our ways to God, trust in him, trust. That's right. he'll bring it all to pass. Amen. And even he even said there, He'll give us the desires of our heart. Amen. A lot of times, we, I don't think we really truly understand the desires of our heart sometimes. I think that there's things that, that we think that we want, but that God truly knows that we don't need that, or we don't need that. It may cause a stumbling block. But then there's things that we don't think that we need that God will put in there. Why? Because that deep down, we don't even know our hearts truly. Mm. But God does. God knows every fiber about me. He knows every hair on my head. He knows everything about me. If He knows that much about me, you don't think He cares that much about me? 
If he's got taken the time to realize that, hey, there's ever how many hairs on his head. I want to take care of him. He don't just do all those things just to do them. He does them because he loves us. He loves us and he wants to see his people prosper down here. Not, I'm not talking about a big house or a big fancy car or money. I'm talking about prospering spiritually. Prosper growing in him. Prospering and growing in our churches. Yep. Seeing our churches grow. Getting, helping win people to Christ. He wants to see us do those things. And we can do those things with his help. Amen. But we have to be willing to have his help. We have to be willing to commit ourselves to Him and say, God, here it is. Here's my life. Take it and use it Amen. for whatever you want. Amen. And we can't just say those words, Tommy. Right. We can't just say those words. We have to mean those words. We have to commit ourselves to those actions and show God that we mean business because we, we, we can talk great words. We can speak mighty things. You see all over the TV, all over the world. There's many people that have the excellency of speech. They can speak things and it makes it sound so good. Even as Christian people, we can say things that sound so good sometimes. But if we don't act on it, if we don't let God lead us, if we don't really mean what we're telling God, it's pointless. We might as well not even tell God. Might as well just keep our mouth shut and go about our business. Because the Bible says it's better not to make an oath with God than to make one and break it. God will take care of His people. Amen. God will take care of us right. through this trouble and times right. that we're going on. And give us joy in the, in the, right. in the battle. Amen. Not that we don't have to be burdened down the whole time that we're going through these things. That's right. There's peace in the valley sometimes. Amen. There's an old song, there's peace in the valley for me. Even when these struggles and trials are going on, even when I'm facing what I think are some of the life's biggest hurdles that I've ever faced, there ought to be peace in my heart. That's right. There ought to be That's peace right. knowing that, hey, there's somebody behind me or in front of me leading me and guiding me and pushing me the right way that I need to go. And he's not going to steer me the wrong way. He's not going to make a mistake. He's not made one. Not one mistake has he ever made. That's right. He ain't going to tell you to do something and then two weeks from now say, Brother Zach, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. You shouldn't have, I shouldn't have told you to do that. Yeah, right. God will never do that to you. I will. I'm, I'll lead you astray sometime. I'll put you down the wrong, not intentionally. But if you watch me long enough, yeah. you'll see me fail. You'll see how I come up short with God. But if you watch God, you'll let God lead you he won't ever let you down. He will never fail you. Amen. He will always be that example. He will always be that light. He will always put you on the straight and narrow path. Yeah. You won't have to worry if I'm doing the right thing. If God's leading you and telling you to do it. You won't have to worry about it. Yeah. I'm thankful <laughs> for that. I'm thankful that I've got a God that loves me yeah, in spite knew. of myself. That's right. That knows. That, that's knew when he yeah. saved me that hey, down the road I'm going to have to pull him out of the gutter here. Yep. I'm going to have to pull him back up out of the gutter again down on down the road here. He already knows those things. And yet, he still was faithful. Amen. He still loved me enough to say, Amen. hey, even though he's going to fail me, even though he's going to mess up along the way, I still want him. I still want him to come to heaven with me. I still want to save him from that place called hell. That's what he wants for us all. He wants us all to walk, I said a minute ago, a prosperous life down here, a spiritual life down here, where people may see who he is. I believe with all of my heart that's the only reason that I'm left here. Because if it's not, then, then we shouldn't be here. If God's only purpose was to save me, and take me out of hell, he would have saved me and took me out September 28, 2014, probably about the 10, 30, 11 o'clock hour, I'd have left this walk of life. You wouldn't see me here. But he left me here for a purpose that maybe my, maybe my daughters need to see, a, see Christ. 
Maybe my wife needs to see Christ. Maybe some of my co-workers need to see Christ. Right. Maybe my brother-in-law needs to see Christ. Maybe there's somebody along the way that I'm going to encounter that needs to see Christ in me. And again, don't misunderstand me. Nothing for about myself. But if they see that in me, if they see that Christ in me, it may get them thinking. Amen. They may get to get concerned about the way that they're living, about where things are going in their life. Because I tell you, I've got a lot of friends, or had a lot of friends back in the day that I could call at the drop of a hat. Say, hey, you want to go do this? You want to go out to here? You want to go do this, do that? Yeah, 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 we'll go. I don't have those friends anymore. They just disappeared when I found God. They disappeared. They didn't want no part of it. And I'm okay with that. I am. I'm okay with that. But maybe down the road somewhere, somebody, somebody, one of them will see me and say, hey, how are you doing? How's life been for you? And that might be all that it takes. I can say, let me tell you about a man. Yeah. About a man that changed my life forever. That's right. I was filling my life with booze and drugs and all these things. But now I fill it with the Word of God. Yeah. Now I fill it with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now I fill it with the Holy Spirit. That's what we're called to do. We're, we're to be that example. We're to be that light. So people can see Christ in us. If we walk around here like I was a couple of weeks ago, all burdened down and my head hung low and defeated, yeah. what am I showing the world? I, I'm showing them there ain't nothing fun about this. There ain't nothing worth living for God for. If I'm going to walk around in a defeated slump all the time, and they'll notice that. They'll notice, you know, they'll notice that more than they'll notice when you're having a good time for God, when you're living for God. They'll notice that. So that's why it's important for us, for me, Amen. as a Christian, Amen. to stay dedicated, to stay committed. Amen. Even when Satan comes at you and throws those fiery darts at you. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Brother Tommy, I'm. Or tell me to hush. You come on. Mm -hmm.